man, it's been it's been a while since we've gotten to to sit down and chat um with today's guest, Dave Jacetta, who does t- tons of amazing things with life coaching, consulting, working with businesses, living in Calgary, enjoying nice weather. You're on the personal development journey that inspires a lot of people. I'm really excited to chat with you today, man. I appreciate you for having me, brother. You left it out that we went to school together too. So we've known each other a little bit in the past too. And it's cool to connect and, you know, just be recording a podcast together. I know that a lot of people talk about university is, oh, well, it's not worth it. And I know there's a big movement towards getting away from post-secondary education, but I think us being here together is one of the major benefits of people going to university. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've talked to lots of people who say, well, I didn't really learn anything or unless I was going to be an engineer or a doctor, it's a waste of time. But I'm sure as you've learned with the business that you've been building, that university can actually play a role if you actually have a purpose or a specific goal that you want to achieve from going to post-secondary education. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually a huge advocate for going to university. I feel like first off, the people that you meet and the network that you build in there is it's next level. Like you can't get that anywhere else. And like, look, me and you are connected right now. And I have a lot of people that I met throughout my university career. But I think one of the major things that happened was the ability to manage your schedule while you're balancing four or five classes and staying organized with that. That directly related to me in my entrepreneurial career afterwards. And so I learned all of these valuable lessons, tools, and skill sets in indirect ways through my university career. And I think that a lot of people are like going through university and they they look at the, the problem or the question that they have in front of them. Sally has four apples and now, you know, Johnny eats one and they're like, this is never going to apply to me. Why am I learning this stuff? But what they're missing is it's the whole process that you go through university in and collecting little tools, lessons, experiences along the way that bundle up into this package that really does prepare you for anything that you're doing in life. So I just look at it from a completely different approach. Yeah, I think the idea of looking at how you're managing your time. And I remember I had a conversation one time in a class where, where people were like, oh, well, university, like, what are you learning? But one girl, she, she spoke up and said, I think the most important thing is that you're meeting people here. Like if you aren't yeah. meeting people in university, then even, even if you like nailed your grades, you become a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. So if you miss that part, then yeah, you might've spent 20 or $30,000 for nothing. If you missed out on the most golden opportunity meeting people, but at the same time, it's maybe not a prerequisite for people to succeed. It just might take a lot more initiative. And like you said, entrepreneurial spirit for you to branch out and do things that are going to give you the same network benefits as going to university or receiving some form of higher education. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I think the reason why some people are gravitating away from university now is because you don't get the specialized education that maybe some people are looking for. Like when we were both in school, we were probably taking some classes that maybe we didn't really like or what we didn't really see the value in and things like that. But now you can go online. Like I'm, I'm a coach and consultant for many business owners and I teach them very specific skills. And I see a lot of people choosing to spend their money on more specific education versus that general education that you get um, in a university degree. And it's kind of up to you on what you want to go with. Like if you know exactly what you're going to do, then go for the specialized education. Maybe you don't need to go to school. But if you're still trying to figure it out, I do see a lot of the value in, you know, trying a bunch of different things, meeting different people, asking people what they like, like just connecting with different people so you can hear different perspectives um, and and just gather kind of a plan for yourself, basically. Specialized education, that is something that has become a lot more popular in recent times. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, what was... What was it that went into to your decision to decide that you wanted to receive specialized education, that you wanted to go down a path where you can actually coach and lead people and do something that is not necessarily within the traditional norms of what someone would do it for work 
after they graduate from university? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a long story behind it that we can get into. I'll give you the Cole's notes. But um, basically, when I was going through university, I had had um, some things going on in my family. And it really led to me going all in on this personal development journey. Like I felt like I reached a rock bottom at one point in my university career. I dropped out of school. I thought that I was never going to be um, going back to school at one point. That was in my third year. And then when I came back, I started, you know, really working towards something and really working on myself. And through my university career, um, I just developed this skill set and mindset that really, I thought that I was here to help other people. And I didn't see a job that provided me with the opportunity to really express my unique abilities and to do something that I actually loved and cared about every single day. And I lost my other jobs, you know, a few times during COVID. And I just thought that I don't want anybody to tell me when I can't work anymore. I want to do something on my own and I want to do something that I love to do every single day. So I went out, it was a, obviously a huge leap of faith. And now it's, you know, four years later um, where things are really starting to come together for me. But it was a, it was a, a blind faith grind in the beginning and not a lot of people you know, believed in it and th things like that. But I always knew that this was going to be something special one day. And so that's why I, I chose to just trust myself and go all in. What was the conversation like that you had with yourself before making the decision to be like, okay, I want to do this, even though this seems like it's maybe more risky, or maybe not a lot of people are going to understand because it's not an easy thing to do. And honestly, when most people are faced with an uncomfortable decision like that, they often opt for the path of least resistance. So mm -hmm. how did you kind of maybe whether it was wrestle or convince yourself that you were going to do something that was untraditional? Yeah, I think uh, a major thing that I've really tapped into is my intuition. And I think that that's something that's not talked about enough in like, you know, university for sure. But especially with men, not a lot of men tap into their intuition and their thoughts, feelings and emotions. And that was something that I really dove into early on. And so I felt it within me that my intuition was trying to guide me on a different path than what I was on. And I needed to listen to my moral compass. That's ultimately what this came down to. I could feel that I was supposed to do something else. I wasn't fulfilled in the work that I was doing. And it honestly wasn't much of a, a wrestling decision for me. It was like, I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that I actually make this thing work. So what specific, like, what was it that, or maybe not what was it, but like, how did you formulate in your mind what specific thing it was that you wanted to do based on what made you feel fulfilled and what made you not feel fulfilled? I mean, obviously, if it's, whether it's being an employee for someone that's not something that's fulfilling, how did you come to the... I guess, destination of like what it is that you're doing now. Yeah. So <laughs> it actually started as a university project. Like my business started as a university project in one of the classes that I hated the most academic skills. You know, that class, I hated that class. I, I built my business as an idea during the class that I hated the most. And throughout university, I kept on using this as a different thing. Like when we had a strategic planning lesson or like a thing that I would give uh, creative freedom on, I would build a business plan for what I wanted to do. And it basically built itself. And then when I graduated, I was working at Sport Manitoba and I had this business that I was kind of playing around with as a side hustle. And every time that I would work on my business, I would lose track of time. I would have so much fun with it. And I cared so much about it. And I was actually starting to be really good at it. And then when I would go to work, the clock would go by so slow. And not to say that it wasn't an amazing job. And I learned a lot in there. And there's amazing people who work there. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity. But it was so obvious to me that I loved doing my own business versus working for somebody else. And so that's what made me kind of gravitate towards it. I was like, I'm not going to spend my life doing something I hate. 
Like, why would I do that? I want to live my life to the fullest. And so it was really clear to me that when I was working on something that I was extremely passionate about, that that's where my fulfillment was coming from. And that's kind of what made the decision really easy for me is I didn't want to waste another second of my life doing something that I hated every single day. I wanted to do something that lit me up on side. Was there someone or well, maybe not someone, but what was it that exposed you to embarking on a personal development journey? Cause I, I was led into it by my younger brother. And whenever I've shared information or talked with other people, you see a lot of the, Oh, this is BS. And this is a scam or this is yeah. Right. All the, the list is, is a hundred miles long of the negative things that surround people that want to work on themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing for me was it. So like I mentioned before, I had some things going on with my family um, that started off in high school and then it dragged on into university as well too. It went on for a, an extended period of time and I got really into using drugs and alcohol and I was just kind of, I felt like I was throwing my life away. And I remember that there was a point for me where I just couldn't live that lifestyle any longer. And I started to get more into fitness. That was the first thing that started everything for me. One of my best friends um, growing up, his name's Mark Sandor. Um, shout out, Mark. He really was um, a key component in me starting my fitness journey because I was a, an athlete for so many years, but I had stopped playing hockey um, because I just didn't feel like myself anymore. And I lost that competitive nature within me. And he really helped me find weight training and fitness and direct my energy towards something. And then from there, I started reading self, self-help books, personal development books. And I was like, oh, wow, like this is awesome. Um, through a few of our classes in university, I also was learning about wellness, which was the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And so it was this concoction of things that came to me at the right time. And I just got really into it because I was like, wow, somebody can work on themselves and improve their life. And at a time where I needed that the most, because I felt like I was at my rock bottom, I thought that this was the time for me to really try this stuff. And that's why I got super into it. And I had met, you know, more people along the way that, that really inspired me to keep moving forwards. And it was just, it was really by chance at the right timing that I got into all this stuff. But once I really got into it, I, I saw that I was the one who, who could take control of my own life. And to me, that was the most empowering feeling ever that I was in charge of the next chapters that get written. Man, the, when you, when you talk about fitness starting at all, I, I can't help, but feel that this is a point a lot of people need to understand is just moving your body. You don't have to be Ronnie Coleman or, or, you know, Rich Piana or any of those people that are just absolutely yoked, but moving your body is so key to just creating mm -hmm. mental clarity. And not, not that you have to become a personal trainer or you have to make your whole life revolve around fitness, but even just hearing how much it's positively impacted you is amazing. And I think that is something that is a golden takeaway for, for the listener of this podcast is how you talk about your business and its origins and how it's not just physical health, it's mental, spiritual, emotional, and how those things are all tied together in a cohesive way. It's not just, well, you got to get jacked and lift a bunch of weight, but who cares about what your mental health is like, or who cares about yeah. what your emotional health is like. And then you see how it all aligns with the way in which you help others and you help yourself, right? Like a podcast episode I was recording yesterday. We were talking actually about, uh, about how to manage being a parent and how to manage um, being an entrepreneur. And he's like, yeah, fitness. Like people introduced me to fitness because as you get older, you spend more time by yourself. You stop playing sports. You don't do group things together. And then you learn that if you can master yourself with fitness and moving your body, then that's, that is the base level foundation for being an entrepreneur and, or just being the CEO of your life, whether you are an entrepreneur yes. or someone else. Yeah. So I'll actually share with, with you and the listeners, the one theory that changed everything for me. 
Um, this was a theory that we actually learned in our degree. So again, there's golden nuggets everywhere you look if you are in the right position and you're open to them. And it's called the self-determination theory. And the self-determination theory is a theory within positive psychology that runs on three main pillars, autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And so autonomy is you're in control of your life. You make your own decisions. You feel like you're the one who controls things. Competence is belief in your own abilities, that you're able to do things. And relatedness is that relation to other people, because all humans, we need that connection. We want to belong to something. Fitness is the thing that hits all of those pillars. You choose to show up to the gym and do the workouts. You're building competence in your abilities by challenging yourself each day. And there's a massive community component to it as well, too. And so that one theory was the, the reason that my whole life went on this path. I saw that in school and I was like, wait a second, I need to start doing that. And it's crazy because I always give this example of the runner, the person who goes on the treadmill and they run on speed five for five minutes and it's super hard for them. They barely make it to that five minutes. Two weeks later, they're running at speed seven for seven minutes and they crush it. And they go, wait a second. I didn't think that I was able to do that before. And now they're doing something more than they thought they could. Where else am I holding myself back from in my life? And this light bulb goes off. And so that one theory, I've applied it to so many different aspects of life. And if you stick to those three main pillars, you will build self-determination in whatever it is that you're trying to do. That is... That to me is the real definition of learning. Mm -hmm. I've had this conversation with friends all the time. People say, man, high school, waste of time. Don't remember anything. University, blah, blah, blah. One of my friends was saying to me once, he's like, man, I don't know what it is, but even if you weren't like a 90 student, I feel like you actually learned how to learn things. And I was like, well, I think that is the point of going to school, right? It's not that you're trying to jump through hoops and you're being a circus monkey, let me tell you something that is actually hilarious that relates exactly to you and to me. The one class we took together that I found that was probably one of the most valuable, even though before I took it, I thought it was going to be the biggest throwaway class ever. We took rec travel and tourism together. Oh, great class. Yes. I love that class. Yes. 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 You know where I'm going. So I know where you're going with this. Was, was it Mark? Was it Mark? Yes. Mark Clark. Is... I'm still really good friends with him today. He is eternally the goat and I will not ever tolerate any slander of that man. Like oh absolute, my goodness. absolute gem. <laughs> I remember when I was taking the class and I was talking with, I would talk with other people at the class and like, man, that test, what the hell was this? It was so hard and this and that. And then whenever we chatted, I think that was probably one of the first classes where we actually got to chat more. We were like, man, yeah. that was great. I got an A. I was like, Hey, I got an A too. And we were talking about the class and it was almost like, you know, you're just, you're resonating on another level. And it wasn't until after we finished the class that I realized, wow, the two people in the class, the only two people that actually got above an A minus in the class were you and me. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to bring up a flex or look, we're smarter and better than other people. Sure, sure. But the point is when you look at the things that we do now and how we've approached life with self-development, with trying to learn, applying things. He was probably the only instructor I ever had in my entire university degree from 2014 to 2021. So seven years that actually put me in a position or put students in a position to really understand and learn things and apply and think for yourself. That is something that Dude. I think is so underrated. And when you look at what you've done, yes, it, it speaks volumes. It's, do you want to, do you want to know something crazy is one of the examples that, so he would use real life examples, right? Like that's how mm -hmm. he taught us things. Yeah. And I love that you just brought up this class. Cause this is one of my favorite. Um, I'm actually really good friends with him still. Like we go for coffee and stuff when I'm back in Winnipeg, but I marketed and built a trade show for one of the businesses that I worked with. That was an exact example that we used. And literally I went back into my notes and applied it directly into what I did with this company that we just worked with. And they crushed it. Like they crushed the trade show. And I was like, I, I've never had a class where I could apply something like that. So you're absolutely right. Like one of my favorite classes for sure. 
um, he knew how to use examples and different things like that to really get you to think about things. And I think that that's why maybe some other people struggled with it because it wasn't so black and white and clear cut. It was more of a, you know, I want to hear what you think about this. How would you do this based on what I've told you? I think there's a difference between playing the game of university where you're just learning how to strategically jump through hoops to get the the carrot versus being able to think for yourself and learn and apply and reflect because hundred percent it's like, that's really what university should, that's how you should approach it. Right. Like I think even, um, were you in, were you in uh, intro to sport management? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Was. That easily, easily greatest class I ever took in university period. End of story. Coach Pierre is one of the, the one of the greatest teachers I've ever had. Yeah. And any person who's ever had the pleasure of being coached by him will know that he is one of the most fair and helpful teachers. And that is what, that, that's what the point of higher education is. And when you look at like how your story has unfolded with building your business and helping other people, it's, you put your pants on, you know, one foot at a time, like the same way that everyone else does. You don't have any mm -hmm. extra special magic or uh, a magic beanstalk growing outside of your, of your apartments, but being able to learn and reflect and do the thing and just continue to build momentum when you apply and take action rather than just, Hmm. Okay. Moving on. That makes a, a whole world of difference. And that yeah. like, and just, I, I could go on about like how, you know, comparisons of FIFA joy and all these other things, but like, that's why I find your story super inspiring and why I know that you have tons of wisdom to share, even just in the, in the small, small bit of time that you've been building a business. It's not like it's 20 years or something, but there's still so much to learn from what you've gone through. And that's, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Like, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I really want people to know, like anybody who's listening to this, that it's absolutely possible to build your own thing and to be successful in it. And you're right. Like, I'm not this like special person. I don't have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Like it's, it truly was just going in and doing something. And I think that it was the skill set that I developed in university from, from going through it um, in the way that you just talked about, like, I just see this all as like a game. And I think it's all about shifting your belief first. Like so many of us, the world that we grow up in, we think that it's not possible to be doing something that that, that the norm isn't doing as well too. We, we get trapped in this collective belief on how we're supposed to live our lives. And I took myself out of the way that everybody else was thinking. And now I see it in a completely different way. And I'm like, wow. I want to show other people that they can do this too. And so that's why I try to show up on social media as much as I do, just because I really do care about this stuff. I'm really passionate about it. And I want to inspire other people to do their own thing because um, at the end of the day, we live in a world where the opportunity to do this now with the tools we have today is, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I feel like, like 30 years ago, if you thought about building a business, it would be completely different than it is today. So I'm just super grateful that we do live in this uh, era where we have the opportunity to kind of do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the, the internet has helped with that, being able to connect, being able to make the world seem a bit smaller and not necessarily rely on actually having to live physically where everyone is that you associate with. And you're right, man. The mindset is just such a huge thing. Like all the, all the principles, all the points that you champion are not thing like you're not reinventing the wheel. It's not something no. that's just like made up that has never, ever been said before. But I feel that the timeless wisdom that we receive from those who have come before us when packaged with our own story is what actually can make a greater impact on people that know you or follow you because yes, you can rattle off all the list of the things that are stereotypes in the self-help space or basic points of wisdom. But when paired with, Hey, I went through this thing. I struggled too. me hitting rock bottom was the reason why I was able to wake up or whatever thing happened. Right. Because oftentimes I feel like, and a lot of the posts you made on social media recently have just hit so hit so hard. <laughs> and I really, really resonate with them, especially the one about like, you know, People are trying to 
to create a life where they think they have to flex, or they have to do this or do that, or they think it's all perfect and no one ever goes through mistakes or bad things happen. But it's really about striving to live a life that is meaningful to you. You know, like, uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to like, to, um, to Danny Miranda's yeah. podcast before, yeah. but so one of the things I heard him talk about, um, was this idea that like having a goal that is specific and unique to your own life, that even if you don't achieve it makes you feel fulfilled and like creates your purpose. That is what each person should try to find. And it's not that it's just a simple Google search away. And I'm not, I don't want to make this sound like it's so easy and everyone knows it, but look at what you're doing. Like how, how much more fulfilled do you feel with creating a life that's specific to yourself compared to trying to fit into this box of, well, if you're an entrepreneur, you have to check X, Y, Z and do this, that, and the other and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean <laughs> that, I think that it's, that's, that's a tough one because I don't even think about it like that. Like I'm just kind of doing me. And I think that a, a large part of what I'm doing right now is like, where can this go and what can you accomplish? And um, we both know Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. That self-actualization of the pursuit of your potential is what provides you with fulfillment and meaning in your life. And so I think that that's kind of similar to what you were talking about there. And ever since I started chasing that of like, what is my potential? Like, what am I capable of in my life? And how do I do that in the way that works best for me? That has provided me with the most meaning in my life. And I'm not going to lie, when I first got really into like my own business, there was a large part of me that thought money and the the stuff that I was bringing in and, and things like that was, was the win or the thing that I was supposed to be chasing. But then when money started to come in, I was like, wait a second, this didn't make me any happier. It was doing something that I found meaningful. That was the thing that made me happy. And that's really where I found was, was the golden nuggets. Yeah, dude, that's uh, changing the mindset around what you're chasing. I, I can't remember what YouTube video I saw this on, but the comments, the, the, there was a comment about how when you're chasing after a goal, you're so obsessed with it. There's three things, you know, it's like experiences matter more than things. Um, And I can't remember what the first one was, but the third one was when you become so obsessed with chasing a goal, eventually you'll get there and you'll realize it wasn't exactly how you had imagined. And I know that, yes, like people talk about, Oh, you have to be trying to arrive somewhere in order to, to feel like you're, you're making progress. But like you just said, you, you, if you think you're chasing money or you hit a 10 K month or a 20 K month, like hedonic adaptation kicks in. You're like, Oh, well, yay. Well, What's next? It's like, it's like, I'm sure the first time you ever hit two, pl two plates on bench, you're like, I'm the king of the world. Okay. Well, yeah, now I've got to do 265. Exactly. Well, that actually reminds me. Um, so I just ran an ultra marathon a few months ago or a month ago now. Yeah. And I was working towards this for six months. I started training. I wasn't a runner really at all. And I went out and did that. And I thought that when I crossed the finish line, there was going to be this huge moment of like, I did it. Like, yes. And there was that, there was like the, Oh my goodness. I can't believe I just did this. But then after it was like, well, now what? And when I, I, it actually really impacted me. Like I just took like five days to myself after like, so many people were texting me being like, how was it? Like, tell me about it. And I was just like, I, I don't want to talk about it yet. And I took those five days to really reflect. Um, and it actually ended up being two weeks. And I reflected on what really happened. And I was really proud of myself that I had accomplished that. But it wasn't crossing the finish line that day that made it worthwhile. It was the person that I became along the way. Like the discipline that I created, the habits that I created, the mindset that I created, the nutrition that I you know, learned about myself, about my body, all of these different things. And when I looked back from that time frame, I was like, damn, that was awesome. But it wasn't awesome because I did that one thing that one day. It was because of the six months leading up to that. And that really, you know, showed me again, it was like the universe slapping me in the face with a lesson. And it was like, hey, enjoy the journey and you're going to get to the destination. But that shouldn't be the thing that you're fixating on.
That's so difficult. It's so much easier said than done. And I think that's, Oh yeah. It's uh, you constantly have to strive for it. It's not just a, yeah, I've heard it now. I know it. And I'm just perfectly executing it. Yeah. Well, this is the thing even too. It's you're right. It's way easier said than done, but I really want to be an advocate and I've really started to do this on social media. I'm sure you've seen advocating for people to change their definition of success. Like if you, let's say you're doing your own thing on your entrepreneurial journey, you make enough money to live in the place that you want to live in. You can buy your groceries, you can pay your phone bill and you wake up happy each day. That is a massive win. Do you know how many people can't do those things? But then we see like social media skewing our perception of success where you see the mansions, the cars, the parties, like all of that kind of stuff. And we measure ourselves. And I'm really trying to advocate and help people see that if you can do something you love and support the lifestyle that you want to live, that is a massive win. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on right now is, am I happy each day? And if I can wake up and say I'm happy, then that's going to be, you know, the the highest thing for me in terms of my success. In mentioning that specific example, I saw a video the other day that someone shared on social media about redefining success. And it was the 70 year old, like billionaire CEO, or whatever, like super su- sure. successful, right? Like by all the societal <laughs> metrics. And one thing he said is like, you know, he's like, to me, you know what real success is? He's like, when you're, when your kids are adults and they want to be with you. He's like, I've been called an asshole. I've been called all these bad names. The greatest thing I've ever been called is dad. And and it was so simple, wow. but it hit me so hard because I'm like, damn, like that is so true. When you're when you've raised your kids, they can do whatever they want, and they choose to spend time with you. They want to be with you. How can you how can you take away take that away from someone in terms of saying it's not success because they don't have a million dollars in the bank or they don't have this car, they don't have this house, like it's not going to go with you when you're dead anyways. So Mm -hmm. whatever, like uh, that's, that's the way I look at it, but I know some, some people may not. And it's, it's really easy to keep up appearances, right? It's really easy to just want the next thing and want more stuff. And cause you think that's, what's going to make people like you more. And then when you get to be 40, 50 and you realize, Oh, I've been wasting all this time trying to impress people that don't actually care for me. Like, yeah. That's a, that was a huge realization. And I had like kind of similar to this first off, when I was traveling Asia, I learned how to live without all of my stuff. I had five shirts and like two pairs of shorts, maybe a little bit more than that, like six or seven shirts actually. And then like two, two or three pairs of shorts and my laptop. And I, I learned how to live without all of the stuff that I have. And then I remember when I came back home, um, I looked at all my things that I had and I was like, I have so much, like almost too much stuff. And I don't even have a lot of stuff. Like I'm a minimalist. And I was like, wow. And then when I moved away to Calgary, I didn't know anybody here really. And I was like, okay, so who am I without my stuff? And when people don't recognize you everywhere you go, who are you when no one else is around? And that to me was like the most empowering thing. I was like, I want to be a person of value. I want to be a person of character. I want to be the positive influence. I want to be the person who holds the door for the person behind me. And I I started to, you know, build who I was away from money, away from success, away from recognition. And that's really where I started to find my true self. Yeah, that is, that's such a, that's so, so key. Like, even the first episode of this podcast was literally about like people just owning so much stuff and not realizing how freeing it is. You almost become a new person when you realized, when you, when you realize that the things you own end up owning you as mm. Tyler Durden says in fight club, you know, so the less things you have, the less things you have to worry about, the less clutter there is in your mind. And the more you actually get to sit with the question, who am I? And what do I want to do? And why? And all those questions, those journal prompts and the way that you help other people, including myself, those things are so key to reflect on because even in my own journey and the things that I've been through, like the the way in which you've been able to help me without even maybe really knowing directly how much you've helped, like, <laughs> it's, it's something that has almost made it feel like life slows down and you actually get to enjoy what you're doing mm-hmm. rather than being so caught up in this rat race and you're on this, you're on this 
mental sprint every day without ever knowing where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I, I think that the, the one I, first off, I'm super grateful that I was able to help you um, in, in the ways just from posting content and giving stuff away. Um, I hope I can continue to do that for you and more people, but yeah, man, the, the rat race is, is a never ending race. And I think that when you can take yourself out of that, I like to say you change your perception of time. And when you can change your perception of time and really experience things and like be a part of this, you know, world that we have around us, things really open up. And I think that a lot of people are living on autopilot right now. And it's tough to see, but I think that there's a big awakening coming right now of people who are living a more conscious life. And we're starting to to really see the value in that. I agree, man. 100%. It's, it's slowly but surely starting. And it actually ties exactly into the question I want to ask you before we go for today. Sure. Three most impactful books, or it could be an audio book, that you've read on your self-development journey. Three most impactful books. That's no particular gonna... order. No particular order. Just three. Yeah. I mean, there's probably like 10, but um, I'm going to have to think about these while I say them. The first one that always comes to mind is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Um, I think that that book is so cool. I read that. That was one of the first self-development books I ever read. And it's really all about understanding your ego. And I didn't even know what an ego was before I really read that book. Like no one really told me about that. And that really changed who I was as a person. Coming from being a high level hockey player, there's obviously a lot of ego involved in that. And that really helped me find my true self. So definitely that one. Um, I'm going to look at this bookshelf for a time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. You can, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Leading Brain great book. The leading brain is all about um, understanding yourself and how you work best and maximizing your peak performance. So that book really helps you take inventory of the way that you operate on a day-to-day -day basis, finding when you work best throughout your days, and then strategically positioning your work periods at your optimal times. Like there's a time of the day where you're the most focused, where you're the most energized, where you're the most creative, when you have the most testosterone going through your body to work out and things like that, how do you structure your ideal day to play optimally to your strengths? Amazing book. Um, what is one more book that I read that I really would recommend? Hmm. I think the alchemist. That's, that's such a good one. So, oh my God, that's, that's a great one. I love that book. And, and I love that it's a storyline too, because I feel like sometimes the self-development books can be like a little bit, not boring, but like the way that they present the information might not always be in a story format. And I loved, re I love reading stories. And so the way that that book communicated your power that you have within you and really that you are the alchemist of your own life. Um, I thought that that was really cool and inspiring for me. And I've directly applied a lot of the lessons um, into the way that I operate today. Yeah, man. Paulo Coelho, shout out to Brazilian authors out there. And especially one of the most impactful stories that he's ever shared. Uh, like the, the story of the fisherman. I'm sure you've heard of it. I haven't actually heard of that. Okay. Well, it's it, it literally is like a, a one minute read. And this is basically the story. So there's a fisherman in a village and a businessman meets him while going through the village. He sees the fisherman and he goes, um, man, like uh, this is what the fisherman does. He, he goes out and fishes during the day, comes back at night and sings songs, eats dinner and hangs out with his family and goes to sleep. And he just, he makes just enough to be able to allow him to do that. And a businessman comes along and he says, man, you're really good at fishing. Don't you know you could, you could uh, fish more and make more. He's like, okay. And then what would I do? And he's like, well, you'd fish more and then you would hire other people to help you fish. Okay. And then what would I do? And then after that, what you could do is you could open a store and you could make even more money. And he's like, okay, well, what would I do after that? And he's like, and then what you could do afterwards is you could have this huge corporation or multi conglomerate business that allows you to chill whenever you want, hang out with your family, eat and drink and dance at night and, and fish on your own time. And then he looks at the businessman and he says, but isn't that exactly what I'm doing right now? Damn. 
just just the poor little fisherman in the village just doing just enough to get by talking about redefining success right is that not considered success Mm -hmm. it is i love that story i love that story and and that's it like what are you content with in your life Like, like what what is the thing that you do? Like, what's your, what's your level that you want to get to so that you're able to enjoy your life? That's what I was saying. Exactly. Like that story. I love that. You just brought that in. Well, man, I really appreciate that you've been able to be on today. It's always a great time catching up always tons of heat that you get to share and the, the stories and the wisdom that you continue to acquire on your journey. I want to acknowledge you for all the great work that you've done so far in your business, man. Thanks brother. U of M alumni, U of M grads, FKRM. FKRM. <laughs> you already know what it's been a pleasure, man. So I, I really appreciate the time that you've had to, to share with me today. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you having me on.